الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبته ومن اهتدى بهديه إلى يوم اللقاء وبعد I will mention one hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم one incident that occurred in his life, in his time, in his presence and from that we will deduce whatever fawaid we can in the time that is uh, in front of us. So for reference, uh, this hadith is narrated by Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala on the authority of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu arda. And I will not quote the matan of the hadith wholly um, because anyway, uh, most people don't understand Arabic and then you have to translate anyway. I will give the gist and the faham of it uh, with extracts from the hadith inshallah So Abu Darda radiallahu anhu says, كانت بين أبي بكر وعمر رضي الله عنهما محاورة Between Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه and Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه There was a محاورة is discussion and an argument. You know, that's how it starts. You start discussing, then you invest, then you get passionate, then you get angry, then you argue. First of all, between who? Between Abu Bakr and Umar. And by consensus, this is the Khayrul Khala'iq Ba'd al Anbiya. The verses of the Quran establish the same. You know, best of creation after the Prophets. This is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Because he had a certain amount of wealth when Islam came, he gave it all. The Prophet said, Atqa, as in most pious of you. This is a superlative, most pious. No one will reach that level. So Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, uh, and the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, uh, he says, the Prophet told me that Abu Bakr and Umar are the leaders of the mature in Jannah. You know, of the, of the fully grown men. Kuhuli ahlil Jannah. Sayyida, kuhuli ahlil Jannah. And they outrank everyone except for the Anbiya in the Rusul. But, with the close, but don't tell them, Ya Ali. You know, list. They relax in their deed and in their a'mal a little because, you know, khalas done, we have reached the maqam, the Prophet has said done. Um, so, Ali ibn Abi Talib narrated this, some say at the point of death of Umar and some after. But established, these are great men. No, no. Both the father-in-laws of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and endless ahadith say the Prophet came in on his Abu Bakr and, and Umar on his side. And subhanallah, uh, fate would have it that they died like that and would be resurrected like that. You go, when you go to Medina, uh, Abu Bakr is there and Umar is there and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there. And subhanallah, coincidentally, coincidentally, our mother Aisha uh, had a dream. Uh, she dreamt that three moons fell into her house. So she told her father, her father used, Abu Bakr used to interpret dreams. So when the Prophet died and got buried in her house, he said, this is the biggest of your moons. It fell into your house. And then he died and was buried. And then Umar at the point of death asked to be buried in the same. So three moons in the house of, in the chambers of Ahmad Aisha radiallahu anha. So point is that arguments will happen even if it's amidst the best of men. It is part of human nature. But I will tell you a few things. Listen to this. If you're able to implement it, it will change your life. And I, don't, I say this with, with a degree of thought. 
there are arguments that must take place. There's no two ways about it. It is haqq and batil. It, it. But the great majority of the arguments are unnecessary. Great majority of conflicts unnecessary. And in an argument, remember this, there is no winner. I will explain. If you win the argument, you will hurt the heart. You will bruise the ego. You will create resentment. So you've lost the heart and won an argument. So the first lesson from the dust tonight, unnecessary arguments avoid. It is from wisdom. As I say unnecessary, yeah, there are certain arguments, la mahala, it has to take place. But most arguments, most arguments have the intelligence, presence of mind to say, there's no khair in this, avoid it. You know, which one's your favorite team? Unnecessary argument. Unnecessary argument. Um, what color do you, and you don't understand me, most arguments, you said this and I said that, most arguments avoid, first rule, avoid unnecessary conflicts. It stains the hearts. It tarnishes relationships. In the event that you forgot the first lesson and went into an argument, dear ones, I swear, this is, these are game changers. It took a long time to figure this out. In the event that you're in an argument, listen to the following. Win the heart if you have a choice and lose the argument. In the event that you have to choose between winning a heart and winning an argument, win the heart. Forget the argument. Because the next step is, is disastrous. Imagine a wife that has loved you, you've been with, you've shared, you know, um, family with and house with and bed with. And, and now for an argument, and I'm not talking about haqq and this is an argument. For an argument, you lose a heart. What a calamity. So, where you have a choice to win an argument or win a heart, opt for the heart. Have this consciously in your head. And I, and I Allah Rabbul Izza has honored me, dun al ahliya, like I'm not worthy of it. I, but I have associated with some of the great scholars of our time. And I saw in them this, that someone much less learned would argue a point, and I know the mas'ala, and the sheikh knows the mas'ala, and he sees that in this, it is not big enough a deal for me to argue. So he says, Habibi, you are right. You are right. Allah benefit the ummah through you. Khalas. The person who is arguing will figure it out in three months' time. Or in three years, ala had al or 30 years, irrespective. But the sheikh has won the heart. So if you have to choose between winning the heart or winning the argument, win the heart, dear ones. Win the heart. So that's the first, le second lesson. Yeah, I'll forget the numbers so that you understand. In the event that you get emotionally involved, as in you forgot the heart and you invested into the conflict and then now you realize you're getting worked up, be cognizant or in the hadith of the Prophet so, so, so you don't think I'm giving random uh, uh, you know, ideas here. The Prophet says, I guarantee a dwelling in Jannah for the one who leaves an argument, although he is right. 
sufficient. Wallahi al-Azim, no argument is worth a house in Jannah. That's not a, worth a house here. You know, if I tell you, khalas, Habibi, leave this argument, I'll give you a house. You can't leave 10 arguments, Ustaz, you know. So, the Ajr is huge. And the event that sh you missed the first few and you've invested, conflict has arisen, emotions have been involved, have the capacity to realize that, listen, now I am angry. Now, passion has taken over. Now, it is a matter of ego. Now, logic is out of the window. If you reach that place, and you have the presence of mind, and it can come through training, step back. Step back. You know, Allah protects this place, and Allah protects uh, those who serve it, and Allah Rabbul Izzah uh, put khair and barakah and qabool in it. If a part of this building were to fall, and the first thing that will happen, dust will rise. Whoever tries to navigate in the dust will hit a few things. In a dusty environment, I mean an environment where emotions have risen and there's lack of clarity, the best thing to do is pull back, take a step back, stand still. So, and the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. Endless, don't get angry. And if you're angry, you're standing, sit. If you're sitting, lie down. Make wudu. On your left, the mal'oon sits, spit and say, A'udhu billah, you know. Uh, most of the problems in this world, actually most of the cases in jail and kasharina is because of a moment of loss of coolness and a moment of anger. I was visiting... Uh, Someone in jail, Allah Rabbul Izzah accept. And he told me, he said, Ustaz, do you see, there was a husband and wife. You know, there's a visiting area, husband and wife. And so I said, why, why, is, why is he in? He said, he had an argument with the wife, got upset, hit the wife. She developed internal bleeding. Because of that, he ended up in jail. But that same wife is coming to visit him. I want to establish, like, wrong what he has done. There's no justification, and this is not one. But what I'm trying to establish is there's still love enough between the two to visit and to sit and to eat, although a huge hurdle has come in their lives. There's no lack of love. So what happened? He became angry for a moment. Shaitan directed him for a moment. Spy lost his job, lost his this. Now he is in jail. Do you see? And most of the cases is a loss of control for a moment. That is why the Rasul says anger is from Shaitan. If you can understand this lesson, buy into this lesson, accept this lesson that Anger is from shaitan. It will put you a mile ahead of everyone else. Because a lot of times you think it's heroism. You think I am being a man. You think, uh, you know, this is rujula and this is strength. And who are you to speak to me like that? Do you know who I am? All shaitan. And again, if you go grow the presence of mind, and sometimes... With your nearest and dearest, like your brother and your father and your cousin and this and that, and you realize you've gone to cloud nine in anger. Over what? Because, so, remember, control the anger. And if you are angry, and these days, Allah guide me and you, Ya Rabbi. These days, you get an email. And you read the email and it irks you. Like from your toe to your head, it starts to burn, you know? And very easy to sit there and let Shakespeare loose, you know? Write 
some fancy email back, some passive aggressive comments, send and then enjoy the storm that comes after. Or take a step back, have a look at it, say Audu Billah, go to the next email, look at it again tomorrow, see if you're karma, answer it. If you're not, wait a third day, read it, see if you're karma. If not, wait. Nothing wrong with answering an email four days later, but a karma email. Text messages. And some people are not good at communicating. I have, I work with certain people. His text miskeen is like a president commanding. And he's no president. I know, you know, I know who you are. But he's, it comes through like that. But I know the man. Man is soft man. He's, he's, the buttons he presses are hard, you know. So take a step back. Don't, as you, if you're angry, don't respond to a text. If you're angry, don't respond to an email. Come back to it. Come back to it. And you will thank me for this. And Allah Rabbul Izzah put it in my hasanat in yours. So, Abu Bakr and Omar argued. And in the argument, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu angered Omar radiallahu anhu. And I can, I can, t anyway, uh, time is short, so I will just teach my lessons. <coughs> so he transgressed against Umar, as in he wronged Umar. In the, the word of the hadith later on says, I wronged him. Uh, so I'm using the word of Abu Bakr himself. I don't have that, uh, that courage to attribute this to, to the man himself. Uh, you know, Ayn al Nuru Suha min Shams al Duha. There's this, you know, it is Su'il Adab Indi. So, but Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu angered Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And as soon as he angered him, he regretted. As soon as he angered him, he regretted. He realized what he had said. He realized what it did to Umar. So straight away he goes, Umar, ask Allah to forgive me. So Omar said, no. So can you imagine now Abu Bakr al-Siddiq walking after Omar ibn al-Khattab? Ya Omar, ask Allah to forgive me. Forgive me, Omar. And Omar radiallahu anhu kept walking till he reached his house, then closed the door and went in and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was left outside. Next important lesson. In an argument where you have missed all the marks, and emotions got involved and you got passionate and in passion and in your conviction you said something that hurt someone, wronged someone. Um, you know, if that happens, based on the level of your heart, you will feel it. The better, cleaner, more sensitive a heart you have, the faster you and the harder you will feel that hit you will realize, Ya Rabb, I wronged the person and this will come in your court. So with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq notice, this is the best of the heart of the Ummah. He has just uttered it and straight away, Umar, ask Allah to forgive me. This is, this is the tarbiyah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who was asking? Abu Bakr. About whom verses have been revealed. The first of the Muslims from the men. Al Mubashirun bil Jannah, Abu Bakrun fil Jannah, wa Umarun fil Jannah. Do you understand? Not an ordinary man. Khayrul Khala'iq ba'd al Anbiya. He and Umar ibn al Khattab knows the maqam of Abu Bakr. He used to say, a day and a night in the life of Abu Bakr is better than Umar in the progeny of Umar. You know, because the verse says, ثَانِ يَثْنَيْنٍ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا This moment in the life of Abu Bakr, first of all, classified sahib by Allah Rabbul Izzah, Second one lifted the fard of kifaya from the whole ummah by himself. Um, and then uh, was there when no one else was there with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Only Allah, the Prophet and Abu Bakr know the feelings and the sentiments in this cave. 
So Omar says those moments out, like wipes out Omar in the Earl of Omar. And he used to be heard saying, would that I had been a hair on the chest of Abu Bakr. So this like, status established amidst the Sahaba who Abu Bakr is. Yet this giant is now running after Umar saying, Ya Umar, forgive me. From this learn that when you err, when you slip up, when you wrong, don't let ego come in and tell you, but hold on a second, you're a teacher and he's a student. You're a husband and she's a wife. You're a mother and that's a child. Uh, you're a boss and that's the one that works for you. Uh, there's no maqam above Abu Bakr. Yet Abu Bakr Siddiq is running, begging, Ya Umar, forgive me. Ya Umar, forgive me. So when you err, when you slip up, go straight away and fix it. Don't delay that one. Because that elephant grows bigger and bigger in the room. If you deal with it straight away, done. So Umar ibn al-Khattab closed the door. So what will Abu Bakr do? With this hanging over his head, that my akhirah, he lifted up his garb and rushed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In Abu Darda says, so imagine the Rasul is seated in the blessed masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Companions are around him, about him. And he sees Abu Bakr from afar lifting his garbs to the level that you can see his anklets. So he says, Ama sahibukum faqad ghamar. Your companion here has had an argument. You know why he knows, apart from prophethood? Because this is his best friend. Since their teens they're together. So much so that when the Prophet Sallallahu used to go on a journey, Abu Bakr used to hire a servant, listen, go and serve my friend and I'll pay you this much along the journey, cook and clean and this and that for him. There are other things, but time will finish. The Rasul and Ahmad Aisha says, there was not a day in which the Prophet wouldn't visit us. A lot of proximity. So the Rasul knows, knows every, uh, every nuance of Abu Bakr. So when he sees him like this, he doesn't say Abu Bakr is sad, Abu Bakr, is, is, Abu Bakr has had an argument. He's had an argument. So then Abu Bakr comes, says salam and sits down perturbed. And then he says, Ya Rasulullah, there was a matter between me and the son of Khattab. فَأَسْرَعَتُ إِلَيْهِ I exceeded the bounds with him. I, w I was excessive. ثُمَّ Then I regretted. Then I asked him to forgive me. And then he refused to forgive me. And then I came to you. Can I stop here? When an argument takes place, when a conflict takes place, when relationships break down, it is very easy to mudsling. You know? I, you see, I see this regularly. You know, a person and a person have been friends for a while. They've got a business together, a business went south, it went belly up. Then all of a sudden they start this one. You know, he's like this and he, but he did this and he did this and I did this. And most of it is not accurate. It is designed to paint the other person in bad light help him salvage what is left of his character most of the time and then it happens in more serious relationships marriages you know after the separation happens divorce happens then you start you know he was like this and she was like this and, and if you rewind back a few years you know that's the same one you used to pray for at night ya rab give me this one 
And that was the same one you were looking for someone to go propose on your behalf. And that was the same one who, um, you know, your heart used to skip a beat as all those stuff. And that was the same one you shared a bed with and the same one you had killed. And now, subhanallah, biyadihi al-maqadir. Something happens and you don't have the character and the presence of mind to say, listen, um, it didn't work out. Allah Rabbul Izzah bless her and Allah bless me. And the stories they come up with afterwards, uh, you know, to salvage a little bit of decency and grace. Uh, dear ones, grace under duress is the murad. Great. Goodness and normal times, easy. Someone gives you a gift, you don't say thank you, there's something wrong with you. Someone does something wrong to you, you're still graceful. That is the, uh, the Quran says so. وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Don't forget decency and grace. And the verse is in regards to talaq. At times of difficulty. So when conflict happens and things fall apart, Abu Bakr came to the Prophet not saying, you know that Umar, the one who didn't believe in you first, and then he believed in you, and then he thinks he's all that because he's bigger than a size wise. Yeah. He says, كَانَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ ابْنِ الْخَطَّابِ شَيْءٍ Something occurred between, and I wronged him, O Prophet. Then I came to you. So the Prophet says, Allah forgive you, O Abu Bakr. Allah forgive you, O Abu Bakr. Allah, o Allah will forgive you, O Abu Bakr. Like even Omar is refusing, Allah will forgive. Then he said, Umar ibn al-Khattab, meanwhile, is at home and he's had a moment to cool down and the goodness, of course, he was the one that was wronged. The goodness of the heart is, he now remembers, subhanAllah, Abu Bakr apologized and I refused. So he rushes out of the house, runs to the house of Abu Bakr, knocks the door. Where's Abu Bakr? He's not here. So Umar knows where Abu Bakr's gone. So Umar walks, Umar walks to the masjid. In my heart of hearts, I feel he was uncomfortable because he knows who Abu Bakr is to the Prophet. But there's no dalil for this. This is just in my heart of hearts. But this one is on Dalil. When he entered the gathering of the Prophet وسلم, the face of the Prophet went red in anger. And his blessed face when he used to be angry, they say it was as though pomegranate was splashed on it. And a vein would come here. I feel a fraction of the tension that would have existed in the room, and especially for Umar, a fraction. You know, because you enter a house and your father's upset. He just looks, doesn't need to say anything. It's awkward. Your teacher's upset, depending on levels of haya in the generation you're in. Our time, our sheikh upset, no one would lift their eyes up. Tense. So Umar radiallahu an has walked in and the Prophet's reaction is tangible. You can, you can feel this. Abu Bakr is watching and he knows the Prophet as the Prophet knows him. So Abu Bakr knows what is coming. So now Omar is walking, getting ready to get seated, and the Prophet is this angry at him. He sees it, they see it, Abu Bakr sees it. Abu Bakr gets on his knees, says, Ya Rasulullah, I wronged him. Ya Rasulullah, I wronged him. Ya Rasul, I wronged him. And the Prophet وسلم, almost not listening says, I came to all of you 
And I said, I am the Prophet of Allah. And you said, you lie. And Abu Bakr said, you speak the truth. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ تَارِكُوا لِي صَاحِبِي فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ تَارِكُوا لِي صَاحِبِي I came to you and I said, I am the Prophet sent by Allah. You all said you lie. He said you speak the truth. Now will you leave my companion be for me? Now will you leave my companion be for me? Twice. And the Ashab say, the Hadith says, no one dared argue with Abu Bakr after that. No one dared argue with Abu Bakr after that. Next lesson. And Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani mentions this in his Sharh. That when a person of a higher status than you, at least in the court of the Lord, humbles himself to apologize to you, it is ill-befitting to be haughty and reject. So for example, young ones are here to teach you this basics of adab because it's missing in where we are. Your mother wrongs you and imagine she is a saintly lady which then says, sweetheart, listen, I, I wronged, I am sorry. That is the moment where you kiss her hands and kiss her feet and you say one like you does not apologize to one like me. Allah forgive you, ya Ummah. Your teacher apologizes, humbles himself to you. This is not a moment for you to show attitude and haughtiness. This is a moment to say, Ustaz, how no, how could my ears hear such a thing from you? You know, you are the Taj of our heads and Allah honor you. And, and if you were to smack me, I wouldn't say anything back. This is adab. So one of the lessons is this. That when, a, when someone big realizes their slip up and tries to apologize, embrace that, honor that, exalt that, this is humans are all, which one of us are without fault and blemish and slip up and, and wrong? So uh, one of the lessons. Another important lesson that seems to occur to me. We are in, in education. Part of education is tarbiyah. In tarbiyah, as soon as the lesson is learnt, you let it go. So for example, a student does something wrong. As soon as he realizes he has wronged, let it go. We do not have in education a punitive system. You know, crime and punishment. Education is an abode of learning. So as you teach maths, you teach tarbiyah, manners. The Prophet is a murabbi. Umar ibn al-Khattab has realized the wrong. He has come back, the Prophet knows. Yet the Prophet وسلم, is visibly upset. There is other lessons beyond why didn't you forgive. And thinking requires that you investigate this notion. Like why is the Prophet وسلم, taking the side of Abu Bakr, when Abu Bakr عنه, is the one that wronged, to forgive is a choice. Although not ideal that he didn't, but choice. Uh, there are certain delicate points here. The first one I mentioned to teach the Ummah that when someone who is big, uh, outranking you, higher than you, apologizes, accept. Don't, like, he has done. 
But there's a point here beyond this that I see as a point of strategy. And I, some of my students are here, they sit in front of me, Allah protect them, Ya Rabbi. Um, I did this dars with my, with my students and I said, go find what, will, what was the Prophet Sallallahu teaching at the strategy level, what is he doing? And whoever gets it, I will give them a hundred dollars. So Allah protect them, Ya Rabbi, they emailed me answers and dropped answers under my door and they, and I extended it for two weeks and for two weeks they were very busy trying to and they speak to sheikhs and they go online and, and this is this is my take on it um, when you study the biographies and the lives of these ashab you notice certain distinct characteristics Umar ibn al-Khattab size-wise is very big. To me, he's like the Shaquille O'Neal of his time. Big man. And personality that big too. And he would cast a big shadow. Physically, but more importantly, metaphorically. So, and Abu Bakr radiallahu an, not as loud as Umar, but very resolute, visionary, could see what would take others years to see. There's evidence for it. The simple fact that the Rasul says, I am the Prophet of Allah, and he says, Ashhadu annaka la Rasulullah, it means he sees what takes others a long time to see. And I can quote, at the, at the point of death of the Prophet ﷺ, before his death, days before, the Rasul came, sat in the masjid, talked to the Ashab, and he says, one of the servants of Allah was given a choice between to live eternally here or to meet meeting of his Lord. He opted for the meeting of his Lord. Abu Bakr is at the back, he shouts, فَدَيْنَاكَ بِآبَائِنَا وَأُمَّهَاتِنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ We sacrifice our fathers and mothers for you, O Prophet of God. And he starts crying, and others are looking. Why is this Sheikh crying? The Prophet gave an example of one of the servants of Allah who was given a choice. They say after he died, we realized that the most learned of us is this one who could see the murad of Allah and his Prophet from a little nuance of an utterance. Do you see? That type of person will be on the truth, but around him will still take time to understand. So if that people around him are consistently arguing, waiting to grow up to his level and not accepting his plan, um, a conflict ensues, crack in the ranks ensues, breakage of protocol ensues, uh, uh, you know, uh, weakness of leadership ensues. And the Prophet wasallam knows Umar and knows Abu Bakr in ta'deeban as a point of tarbiyah. The Prophet وسلم, teaches Umar this lesson that irrespective of what happens, don't ever grow the courage to challenge Abu Bakr. And you saw the products days after the death of the Rasul. So the Prophet وسلم, passed away. At the point of death, Umar takes out his sword. Says, whoever says the Prophet has passed away, I'll cut off his head. Then Abu Bakr comes into the scene and he just says, Ala rislika ya Umar, sit Umar. And as soon as Umar sees him on the pulpit, Umar desists, seizes his, his shout and his screams. And when he talks, Umar falls onto the ground. You see, because he's learnt. Don't challenge this one. And he taught it to him so deep, like the anger of the, that won't go away quick. That mark is deep inside. And even more clearly, you'll see it a day after this. So the Ansar have gathered in the orchards of Banu Saqifa to select the next leader of the Muslims. The Rasul has passed away. Who will lead the Muslim nation? 
Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu hears about it, Umar hears about it, the Muhajirun hears about it, so they go, let's go talk to our brothers. So Abu Bakr, Umar radiallahu anhum, Aba Ubaid ibn Jarrah and others enter the gathering which the Ansar are seated on. So the Ansar see the delegation of the Muhajirun come. So one of them stand and he says that we are the Ansar of the Prophet, the army of Islam, the honor of it, its city, rightfully reign of leadership should be amidst us. So Abu Bakr listened, Umar listened. Umar says, says, walking to this meeting, I prepared a speech and I prepared all the points. And I listened to the Ansar and as he finished, I got up to speak. But, he says, Abu Bakr placed his hand on my shoulder and said, sit Omar. Now, can you imagine normally without this lesson, who would have set Omar down? Do you understand? But the lesson has been given. So, he sits. Humbly, subserviently, Abu Bakr has said, and I remember what the Prophet did last time. Khalas. So he says, Abu Bakr spoke, radiallahu, and covered all my points more eloquently than me. And then said, O Ansar, all your claims are true. But the first of the Muslims were the Muhajirs. They are the family of the Prophet. And when the Quran mentions them, it mentions them first and then you second. فَنَحْنُ الْأُمَرَى وَأَنْتُمُ الْوُزَرَى So the, 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 the Muhajirun by merit will always be the leaders and you will be the Wazirs. So I give you one of these two, pledge allegiance to them. He held the hand of Umar and Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah. And he said, for this one, the Prophet made dua that the honor of Islam be in him. And for this one, he is the Amin of the Ummah and it both your safe, choose one. So Omar says, this one point I didn't like. So Omar stands and says, Ya Abu Bakr, the Prophet on his deathbed put you in charge of our salah, which is the Amr of our Akhirah. And if he chooses you as our leader for the matter of our deen and our Akhirah, why won't we choose you for the matter of the dunya? And you are the one who says, Thani yathnainin idhuma fil ghar, second of the two, only to the Prophet. You know this man, second of the two, is a statement of his life. He was the second of the two to believe, the second of the two to migrate, the second of the two in the ghar, the second of the two in the qabr, and the second of the two in resurrection. Abu Bakr is Siddiq. So, uh, stretch out your hand Abu Bakr, so Abu Bakr stretched Omar quickly, clasped it, made bay'ah, everyone else followed. I think history would have looked different had this moment not transpired with the Prophet. And then whilst in Khilafat of Abu Bakr, because remember Umar, that strong personality. Uh, I was there in Qudel yesterday, even at the death of Abu, Abu, uh, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, Umar stands in front of the Prophet, Oh Prophet, will you pray this salah? And the Prophet says, move Umar, I know. Oh Prophet, this is Abu, Abdullah ibn Ubay, and so on. Strong personality. So he needed to be brought to obedience and understand his superiority in his maqam, uh, you know, the superiority of Abu Bakr and his maqam. And then after this, throughout the Khilafat of Abu Bakr, Umar radiallahu anhu taught us how to be an advisor and someone subservient to the leader. There are instances, instances where this Smaller size Abu Bakr, weaker bodied Abu Bakr, grabs this giant from the collar and says, Oh son of Khattab, you used to be more braver in the day of Jahiliya than you are in your Islam. And Umar quiet. And even at his deathbed, he says, calls him, Umar, I have chosen you as my successor. So he says, what if I refuse? He said, either obedience or the sword. You know, Abu Bakr, Rajulun Hadid, resolute man. He used to see what others wouldn't. And when he committed to it, that was it. And a lot, you have an image, he was soft. And uh, his son says, Innahu Rajulun Hadid. He was a man like metal. So he tells Umar, either obedience or the sword. So 
This is the hikmah and the wisdom and the tarbiyah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which set the trajectory for the future of Islam. And um, you saw its golden era come at the hands of these ones. May Allah Rabbul Izzah bless you for your time and patience. فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتِ انْتَكُوا حَسَنَةً فَمِنَ اللَّهُ وَانْتَكُوا سَيِّئَةً فَمِنْ نَفْسِي وَشَيْطَانِ